Now, once you have your reference gathered and or a concept to work from, it's very important to take a minute and plan out your approach. So here are a couple different concepts of the type of mining structure I'm going to build. This version here sits atop the giant pipeline so the workers can slave away close to home. I, I want the structures to feel very temporary and modular and also very utilitarian. For instance, the roofs have layers and layers of metal sheets and panels like quickly attached up because the priority here is all about the mining and making that money. Now here is the first concept of the structure I did. It's a standalone structure and I envisioned it as sort of a commissary for the miners or the company store where they can go blow all their credits on uh, Funyuns and Red Bull. It shares a lot of similarities with the more utilitarian version but is a little more whimsical because of the fun roof shapes and wacky silhouette. This last variation is kind of nestled within a hillside, so you have a challenge of creating the grass material and blending that from the actual terrain grass up into the prop. So a whole new set of challenges we'll talk about, but for right now, I'm going to stick with the market version of the structure, and we'll talk about how exactly to break all these textures down before we start modeling. So because we have multiple variations of this structure, we need to make sure our materials and textures are set up in a modular fashion so that we don't have to recreate them for every different building shape and need. When I start this planning process, I'll usually just create kind of a side panel over here and make little square swatches that I'll quickly sketch in what texture that is, and I'll make a note if it's tiling and what size I'll, I'll generally author it at. Now, this isn't set in stone but it's, it's a great way to work. And once I get, hop into 3D Max or Maya, I'm a lot more comfortable and confident with the direction. When you look at a concept, you wanna kind of break the materials down in priority. So, you know, usually it's the, the textures and materials that cover the most surface space. You can start with those on your planning. So I'm gonna make a little texture swatch of this concrete base. And this, of course, will, will make it tiling each direction. And later on, we'll get into specific functionality of this material with using the decals and, and things like that. But right now, I just want a general plan. Then I'll actually just write in a quick little note for myself. So in this case, I'll make this texture tile in all directions, and I'll write the intended texture size. This becomes important if you're doing an art test where you have to keep your, your material and texture budget at a certain level. Uh, this way you can plan and decide which, which textures you think should take priority. I'm gonna also write a little in for normal map. I think for this concrete to have multiple layers kind of building up and, and cracks in the concrete will look good with the normal map and help with the lighting. So a similar effect to what I'm sketching here. The next material I wanna to try to plan out is this kind of honeycombed tile roof, really rusty metal. I'll deal with the metal plate segment of this, that'll be a separate material later, but right now I just want to focus on these tiles. So now I'll just take my kind of hexagonal brush and indicate that this is a tiling roof texture here. Now usually when I create a roof texture, I'll also create an accompanying alpha texture or transparency texture that continues the same tiled pattern, but then it comes to a, a rough edge. This way you can apply the tiling texture to the large surface areas of your roof and then have it transition seamlessly into the silhouette edges here. For example, this strip of polygons would have the alpha material applied to the edge, but the UV map would be seamless. So if you went into the Unwrap UVW, this would all be one UV shell blending right in with the larger material that tiles all directions. So we'll get into the specifics of how this works. It's a little bit weird and technical, but it's something to think about in the planning stage. So now since we have this alpha texture or material planned, I'm going to go find out all the elements from the concept that could be used as an alpha map. For instance, this little uh, ventilation kind of bracket thing, this might be just good to throw on an alpha plane and have it recess within windows just for some nice added detail. Also, we can take this framework here, this little lattice work, throw this on our alpha material. Since it's recessed within that little window space, you won't really see that it's just a flat texture, so that works fine here. Also, it's worth thinking about which details here should tile across horizontally. In this case, the roof trim would make sense because you could potentially have that cover the length of a long building. 
With the lattice, it would look fine to just cut up the geometry to fit the texture shape and have the UVs keep referencing the same UV space. The only reason you don't want to always do this is when you might want added texture variety. For instance, if you had a dark grime stain on this lattice, it would appear too repetitious if you stacked them 5x5 five five horizontally. So here I'm just finding all of the other details that might fit into our alpha texture. Things like pulleys, gears, and the blades of grass are good candidates since I'll need to use a lot of them in the scene and having each one modeled out would be very taxing on mid-level machines. Once I have most of the important details accounted for, I'll leave room for the polish phase of the process. Once things get a little closer to being finished, it always comes in handy to have extra texture space available and it makes sense to save the space for when you really need it. Too often I see people fill their textures up early just so that it appears to be full and not wasteful, when in fact it becomes more wasteful because not all the details are being used. Next I'll plan out this beige tech paneling that covers the main walls. This will be another standard tiling texture and will also have a normal map. I would recommend watching our tiling textures in ZBrush tutorial for a better understanding of how this final texture will be made. The important thing with this is finding the right balance of scale and unique details. For instance, if we just created a texture that consisted of two giant panels and each one had a specific number of decal on it, then it would be very repetitious when tiled. So here we have our four main materials planned out, three standard tiling materials and one alpha transparency texture. Now with some of these details, specifically the hatch windows and bracket style frames, I want to actually do a custom bake from a high poly sub D model down to a low poly mesh. Here's an example of what I did with the window during a class demo, and I want to shoot for this level of polish for the entire structure. With this specific example, the low poly mesh is still around 1000 tries, so once I have 8 or 10 of these windows placed on the structure, it'll start getting pretty expensive. To compensate for these expensive details, I plan on creating LOD states for each of the main pieces. LOD stands for level of detail and is commonly used in games to achieve much higher detail up close to the player while switching the asset to a cheaper version as it gets further from the camera. In this case, I plan on having these bracketed hatch windows switch to a simple alpha plane for its LOD. Another cool trick that I can plan for is creating a tiling texture out of a unique bake. This way you get the modularity of the tiling and the accuracy of the custom bake. It's easy to pull off if you lay out your bake details in a way that you can add the tiling elements behind them without disturbing the original textures. For instance, if I add some generic scaffolding and brackets behind the window, it will enable me to use a simple version of the windows on a building where the details were higher up. For instance, if I had some factory and I wanted hundreds of these windows you know, on the third floor, I could just take this tiling version and tile it horizontally on the geometry. Now I just have a few more materials to plan for, one being a small tiling grass texture for the alpha planes to sink into. Since it'll be mostly covered, this texture can be authored as a 256 or even smaller. The grass planes we planned for on the alpha sheet could also be scattered atop the bunker like so. Lastly, the supporting metal sheet panels for the roof. These could be authored in a similar way to the tech panels, and then you can always cut out the actual shapes from the texture and shell them to have some panels that are actually full geometry. This will help sell the chaotic patchwork look that the concept has. So this brings our final material count to seven. This means each time we place this building in our scene, it will add at least seven draw calls, so this will definitely add up after a while. Usually during the optimization phase of a project, you would look at which of these materials can be consolidated together. For now, I'll keep moving forward with this plan, and in the final chapters we can explore some ways to optimize the structure and material count. That wraps up our chapter on texture and material planning. Now let's actually start this thing.